हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट आर क्लास इलेवेंथ इकोनॉमिक्स सेकेंड चैप्टर इंडियन इकोनॉमी 1950 टू 1990 in the previous chapter we introduced how india struggled and fought for its independence and how right after independence the situations were in a complete chaotic manner uh, the economy was shattered the agriculture was not working well there was very very few number of industries in the country and overall the economy had to start from scratch to build a new empire now after the independence when the government was elected and they were given the responsibility to start the economy from the basics the first and foremost question that they had to face was what kind of economy they wanted our leader mr jawahar lal nehru the prime minister of the country uh, himself was a learned man and has been seeing different kind of economic patterns around the world and he wanted a pattern that would not follow the ideologies but rather would fit the kind of population the kind of demography that the country had so to start this quest the first thing that we need to understand is what is an economic system to answer this question first we need to fulfill three queries what goods and services should be produced in the country how should the goods and services be produced and lastly how should the goods and services be distributed among people to answer the first question what goods and services should be produced in the country we need to identify whether we are in need of the basic goods and services or luxury goods and services the kind of goods which a country produces would define the type of economy it has for example if you take the example of our country india we see that majority of the goods and services that are produced are fulfilling the basic needs of the people food transportation such kind of basic services and goods uh, on the other hand if you take say switzerland they are aware that the economy is run on basically tourism so the goods and services that are available there are produced to fulfill that respective requirement so the economic system is based on what kind of goods and services should be produced in the country the second query how should the goods and services be produced this is when you decide what kind of input you require for producing those goods and services should the producers be using more of uh, human labor or more of capital intensive inputs like machineries and computers and technology so the type of these inputs would decide what kind of an economy uh, there is if we are using more of human labor this would mean that we ours is more of a labor intensive economy and on the other hand if we are more towards the capitalist goods than ours would be a capitalist economy the third question how should the goods and services be distributed amongst the people is what finally decides the 
name or the picture that rises up in front of us which people should be given the benefits of the production in the country and this is i would say the main question which decides the form the economic system that a country pursues if we come go across the world we come around two major types of economic system that you see in the world the first is capitalist economy and the second is a socialist economy capital as the term itself says is related with money which is invested in so this kind of economy basically it's dependent on the market forces of supply and demand as these market forces work whatever is demanded in the market is what decides what should be supplied to the people here if cars are in demand then cars will be produced and if bicycles are in demand then bicycles will be produced irrespective of what the individual's requirement is so if goods are produced uh, within the capitalist economy they are not distributed on the basis of what uh, the people basically need rather it is distributed on the basis of how much of purchasing power how much of capital these people carry and what is their ability to buy goods and services so within the capitalist economy if a poor person or a poor community is in need of some basic good then that demand will not be entertained because uh, these people do not become a significant part of the capitalist economy those people who are actually uh, paying large amount of cash are the ones who decide what should be produced in the economy and what should be supplied by the industrialist so in this kind of an economy the market is controlled entirely by those who have monetary strength in their hands and the rest they do not pose any effect on the government you can take examples right from around you uh, you might uh, be watching movies 
on english channels you see that there in uh, the american society for example if a child has attained the age of 17 you see that they are uh, given their driving license from the schools only and they are bought a car question why is it that a 17 year old boy is uh, given the luxury of a car in that economy the only simplest reason behind that is that you do not find public services which uh, are open to all that easily in a capitalist economy so if you ne need any uh, object of transportation if you need any medium of transportation you should be able to uh, fulfill that requirement by your own means the government is not responsible to provide what is needed by the people they will only provide the things which is which can be um, bought from them which can be paid for so this was the capitalist economy uh, the other type is the socialist economy You must have studied in previous classes about Russian Revolution where we see the beginning of this concept. Under a socialist society, it is the government's responsibility to decide what goods should be produced and in what number. Here as the decision is done by the government, so they see uh, what is the majority demand of the society. So here the individual demand that if a small community is in need of something, the government may not be paying that much of a heed towards that demand. In fact, uh, if the government sees that yes, majority of the population needs housing facilities, they would launch a plan and they would provide this facility to everybody. So here the individuals do not have rights to demand for what they want on a personal level. But the government decides whatever is the requirement of the society in large and then takes the responsibility of providing that facility to the people. So here the motive is to do social welfare and uh, irrespective of the individual uh, well-being we see that society enlarge in a single unit should develop so here the society enlarge is developing but on the other hand whatever the individual wishes to uh, pursue is not given that much of a importance But as against the capitalist economy, here the individual property, individual assets are not given any uh, significance. Here all the goods and services are under the hands of the government. So there is no private property. So, 
as we see these two examples we come across two very extreme ideas that one economy where only the money holders can get all the resources and one economy where the individuals cannot decide whether they want something or not so if we had to put these two extreme levels of economic system into our country it might have been very difficult for us to cope with these kind of economic system say if we were to follow capitalism then it would have meant that only the rich people would carry all the resources and that would have been unfair to the majority poor section on the other hand if we were to follow socialism uh, in its pure form then it uh, might have been unfair to those who were uh, owning large amount of private properties and who were holding businesses and industries so the government had to come up with a middle way where they could just conjoin these two kind of systems and evolve a system which would be adapted in accordance to the demography and economy of our country so we came up with the concept of mixed economy which says that the government and the market both will decide the three questions of the economic system there there will be sections where the government would be holding the right to take decisions and there would be sections where the private individuals and property holders can decide what is good for them and what is not so the mixed economy was the best possible system that was to be placed in our country so now when the economic system was decided our next step was to come up with a plan where we could use this mixed economic system and generate the best possible result so the next level will introduce the five year plan that became the uh, backbone of the economic development of our country we'll study them in the next lecture thank you so much